All right, hi everyone, I'm Tony. Um, and this is my presentation about RTL-SDR. So, to start out, what is RTL-SDR? Well, the SDR part people might be familiar with. It's a software-defined radio. Um, basically, the idea is that the signal processing is done in the um, software domain. All the stuff that was typically done in hardware in a radio, all the demodulation and all the, that sort of processing um, is now done in software. And it allows you to control the radio better, have better filtering, uh, build the radio smaller, and it's kind of the future of where uh, wireless communications is going. The RTL portion refers to a specific chipset used, uh, that's the demodulator chip, um, and it's typically used in these, these little dongles, they're for um, digital uh, television broadcasts in Europe is where this one, these are for, and um, basically some people found out that you could access the IQ output, which is basically giving the actual demodulation um, data. So they were able to access it and work with it from these things. So it's pretty easy to get started. You need to get the dongle, you need to build or buy an antenna, and download software and drivers. Um, and there's a lot more you can do from that. We'll get to that in a second. All right, so as far as choosing the dongle, there's a few different models. Um, the biggest difference is the tuner that's inside them, and that will change the frequency range which it'll, the radio will work at. Um, right here, I've got the Alonix E4000, um, although the Micro R820T is uh, typically the most popular. People like that one the most because it goes down the farthest, or one of the farthest. The other one is kind of hard to find. Um, so these are some of the different packages they come in. Um, nothing too different. That one's smaller, obviously. Uh, they come with a remote, a little antenna, which is not good for what we're going to use it for, and the dongle itself. And they're about 20 bucks. You can get them online at, uh, on eBay, Amazon, all over the place. It's a pretty big phenomenon now in the hacker world to use these things, so they're pretty cheap. All right, uh, antennas are a huge topic, so I'll cover uh, some basic things. The connector on them is a little MCX connector, um, and professional radio, uh, as far as these sorts of things, it's not commonly used. So you're going to need to get adapters. As you can see, I've got a whole little adapter uh, piece on there um, to fit whatever antenna connector you end up using. Um, the simplest antenna you can make is a half wave dipole. Very easy to build. It's shown here. You've got a quarter, you calculate the wavelength, um, and you've got, you put a, basically a piece of wire that's a quarter of a wavelength to the center conductor and a quarter of a wavelength to the shield and uh, hang it up. And that's your most basic antenna, and it works pretty well. Um, there's other ones that are better for other things. The disc cone is a really wide bandwidth. So for something like this, if you want to do a, a huge range of frequencies, look into a disc cone, it'll cover them all. Ground plane is another type. Uh, the one I have up here is actually a ground plane antenna. Um, what you don't see is it needs to sit on a metal plane to work optimally. Um, so that's just another type. And there's a ton of antennas, and there's tons of stuff online about them. So uh, definitely check that out if you're interested. And the drivers and software, um, at this point are pretty easy. Um, it's all supplied online and packages ready to go. Uh, there's a few general purpose uh, software, pieces of software. Um, I'll show this in a little bit. The one I use is SDR Sharp. It basically demodulates it and puts it out as audio. So, um, and you can do uh, different modes of radio signals with that. Um, there's a ton of different options. There's ones for every platform, Linux, Mac, um, Windows, even Android, and uh, they're pretty easy to use. There's also other pieces of software that are for specific applications, which I'll also show. You can watch TV, kind of like it was intended. Um, you can do other sorts of, you can use it as a GPS receiver. Well, I'll show some more examples of stuff like that in a second, but there's a ton of other applications, and there is a huge um, community doing this, so it's very easy to make your own sort of software. Um, MATLAB now supports there's a library with MATLAB that'll let you access this stuff. Um, the GNU radio project, um, that toolkit also works with this. So there's a ton of stuff. If you want to really hack um, and write some software yourself, you can do that too pretty easily. Okay, so what can you actually do with it? So we're going to see in a second plane tracking. Um, it covers the radio frequency that planes transponders broadcast at. And you can pick that up. There's a similar thing for ships. Um, you can listen to the radio, you know, FM broadcast, please fire, um, amateur radio. I'll put a little plug here. I'm in charge of the ham radio club here at school, so if you have any interest in radio, let me know. 
um, and you can monitor all that stuff. Um, one thing to note is these guys are receive only. So there are SDRs that you can transmit. These are cheap because they're receive only. You can also do uh, pick up weather satellites orbiting on this thing, um, air traffic control, GSM signals. You can, act, you can make it work as a GPS receiver with some extra hardware, which is kind of neat. Radio astronomy, and there's a ton of other things. Um, and there's a ton of pieces of software for a ton of other things. So these are the big resources. RTL SDR is a blog um, that uh, continually updating with new projects people have used it for. Um, and yeah, I can I post this to the Facebook group, so if anyone wants to check those links out, they're there. Um, and actually, on the RTL SDR site, there's like there's a tutorial of how to get started. There's a page that's devoted to picking which receiver you want and antenna and all that, and then just getting started. It's really really quite easy to do. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little demo of two different things. Um, we're gonna start with ADSB and then SDR Sharp. Um, so ADSB is the um, plane transponders, like I was talking about. This is not on the right screen. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So as you can see here. Um, there's actually two pieces of software working in conjunction here. This is ADSB scope, which is graphing it and uh, picking up everything. There's another piece of software running uh, that you can't see called ADSB Sharp. That's actually doing the demodulating and talking to the dongle itself. Um, there's professional grade receivers that use the same software, so this is a pretty powerful piece of software. But as you can see, it lists the registration number of the plane, altitude, position, speed heading, ton of information. Um, Obviously, if I was outside, you'd get a much better signal. These are at uh, 1090 megahertz, so you're gonna have, you know, inside you're gonna have a lot of issues picking it up. Also, this antenna is not optimized for those frequencies. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty easy, and I picked up a ton of planes. Now, not all of them broadcast their position all the time, which is why you don't see them all. But if I go over to the map, so that little uh, crosshairs is where we are. There is a plane that picks up. Um, and actually, when I was near the window, it's picking up more. Um, but it's kind of a neat thing. And there's like there's online services that do a similar thing, and people actually run these on a server at their house and upload that data. So that's how a lot of those places get their data, um, is people running things like that. The other uh, more basic way you can do things, let's see. As I was mentioning with SDR Sharp, which is simply, let's get this closed. Let's see if it'll work. Mm -hmm. That other guy is running in the background. It's fine when it's good. So if you can hear that, um, you can just simply do that. Um, I'll pause this for a second. So as you can see, there's a ton of different options. There's filtering, all sorts of stuff. And it has narrow FM, wide FM, ASB, or sorry, ASB, AM, uh, DSB, which is double sideband, and you can do single sideband CW. So this, this software alone will decode a ton of different um, types of signals, and you can just listen to them. And you can also port them to other pieces of software to do the decoding. Um, but it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, one thing that Taylor was talking to me about earlier is you can actually buy an up converter. So the frequency range on these goes down to about 22 megahertz. Um, if you know anything about um, like this, a, like AM radio, is down near one megahertz. Um, you can get an up converter that'll convert that up, so you can use this thing to decode those signals. Uh, there's a bunch of ham radio activity down there also, and tons of other shortwave and things down there. So you can get another separate piece of hardware. I think they're around 50 bucks, and uh, you can get that working with this also. 
So it uh, makes it a pretty powerful receiver. Um, the big thing about these is that they're cheap. The other options in the past have been very expensive and you know most hobbyists couldn't get their hands on them. Um, but yeah, these are cheap, but there are some trade-offs. Um, they're not very stable temperature-wise, so you'll get a little frequency drift. Also, there's always, because of that partially, but they're not, that, they're not well synchronized, so you're gonna get, um, it won't tune as, it won't tune specifically to the frequency as broadcast. So like, if I wanted to tune to 104.3 here, um, I'm gonna find it's not on that frequency according to this thing. So those are some things you have to battle, but uh, at 20 bucks, it's still a pretty good deal. Um, trying to think anything else. Yeah, not too much else. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Graham? You said uh, you could pick up a uh, basically. Yes. So what, have you ever done that? <laughs> yeah, so if, if you've ever done like a radio scanner, you know, like a Radio Shack scanner, this can perform the same functions, basically. Um, I don't know where like Terra Haute's, what their frequencies is off frequencies are offhand, you can look them up. And then you can tune to them. Yeah, you can listen to the police radio, <laughs> anything. Totally legal, by the way. Anything uh, that's not encrypted, you're allowed to listen to. So. All right. All right, thanks, guys.